Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. It is the morning after the night before. Uh, the night before being the obliteration of Chris Eubank Jr. by Liam Smith. Uh, yeah, Liam Smith. I, I'm still in shock, to be honest with you. Um, I did pick Smith to win on points. I didn't say that with any great confidence, but I had a hunch he might be able to survive what I thought survived was the early, early rounds. In fact, he did more than that. He beat Eubank, but... I, th I expected Eubank to be strong early and for Smith to come on and possibly win uh, a close decision. I did not, under any circumstances, think that Smith would do that to Eubank, stop him in four rounds. Amazing, amazing result. Well done to Liam Smith. But the, the question is, and this is not a video that's going to try to take any of the credit away from Smith, we've got to ask ourselves what happened to Chris Eubank because... It was such a shocking sight uh, to see a guy who previously had, you know, what he calls the Eubank genes and to to go uh, to go out in such a manner um, to get nailed by a guy who's been a career super welterweight and to just collapse, and to be on rubber legs. What happened? I mean, Smith's combinations were, you know, unerringly accurate. They were they were brilliantly um, placed. He threw the right punches at the right time. He's just a very, very well-schooled fighter. And he's got a bit of spite in him. Um, unlike, say, Callum, who has, who may even have better boxing skills and be an overall better, better boxer. But Callum tends to be a more sort of... Um, a more, a more um, passive type. Um, so Liam's got some nastiness to him. But I would be surprised if, in the case of Eubank the weight didn't have something to do with his capitulation because you cannot keep boiling yourself down to an unnatural weight. And bear in mind that Eubank fought as a super middleweight for a long time, for a couple of years, um, and looked physically strong. You know, he went the distance with Groves. He lost the fight, obviously, but um, he smashed through Avni Yildrim in over in Turkey, was it in Turkey? I think it was, wasn't it? Um, and Yildrim, Yildrim at the time was undefeated and some people thought he'd beat Eubank. Uh, but he looked physically strong, he looked imposing. He had all of his, uh, uh, you know, his attributes were, were visible. Um, and then he, he bores himself all the way down to 160 again. And even for the Conor Ben fight, even though it was an aborted fight, um, he did get down, was it 159? I mean, this, for a 33-year-old man to do this, it it takes it out of you. I mean, let's let's use a couple of obvious examples. Roy Jones Jr. went up to heavyweight. He weighed, um, I think he had, you know, he, he weighed in with his with his tracksuit on, with things in his pockets and everything. He still only weighed 198 or something like that. But um, then he went down to 175. He looked quite bad against... Um, Antonio Tarver in the first fight but eked out a victory and in the second fight he got knocked out in two rounds um, and in his following fight he got knocked out by um, a guy you know, who was it, I know, I can see the guy in my mind's eye, what was his name, Glenn Johnson uh, and he was getting knocked spark out you know he got blown away by Danny Green in a round um he just his punch resistance was shot because he'd wrecked his body. He'd boiled himself down too much. Another example would be Chad Dawson. Went down to 168 to fight Andre Ward. Had nothing left. Ward toyed with him. Had they fought at 175, Ward may well have won. But but when Dawson went back up to 175, he got done in a round by um, Adonis Stevenson. And he just never looked the same. You can wreck your body by this constant draining yourself of weight it's it's not healthy and Eubank you see him on the scales at 160 I mean he looks like he's cut from marble but at the same time you you, you know you need a little little bit a little bit of weight a little bit of fat maybe to burn off during an arduous fight otherwise if you don't have it it the uh, cerebral fluid in, in your, that, that your brain sits in um, that starts to get sapped and of course, if that happens, then you are in danger because your brain is like a coin rattling around in a box and you can get brain injuries. Um, so, yeah, the weight, the weight was a massive, massive thing. And 
Another aspect, I just wonder whether during the build-up, and Eubank has alluded to this post-fight, he said that he found, you know, that he regretted the build-up and he, you know, he found it all a bit tasteless and everything. He, he said that immediately after the fight. I just wonder if that affected him. Because yeah. look, all this talk about, you know, are you gay? And, or, you know, well, you're cheating on your wife, all this crap. Um, it's pantomime stuff, but it, but some people just don't like it. I don't like watching it. If I was a fighter, I wouldn't get involved in that stuff. I'm, you know, um, bear in mind that Eubanks had a tough couple of years. You know, his father doesn't seem to be in the best of mental health. Um, and also, of course, his brother Sebastian passed away. That's tough. That affects a fighter. That can make a fighter say, what's the point of not just boxing, but anything. Um, it can make you question if you've got a faith. I mean, I'm, I'm not religious, but I believe Eubank is, Eubank Jr. is in some form or other. It can make you really question everything. It can make you question life. Um, it can have a very, very adverse effect on on your work ethic. Um, you can go through the motions, but you, could, you, don't, you don't necessarily feel it anymore. You don't necessarily feel anything because, you know, bereavement is a terrible thing. It, Anyone who suffered it knows it is. Uh, so I wonder if that had an effect. Um, because in that press conference, that final, you know, the, 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 what, the day before, or two days before, Eubank looked irked. He looked irritated. He doesn't usually. And suddenly, you know, all that talk about being 50% and being, you know, tenderizing Smith Jr. or whatever he was saying, suddenly that, that, it seemed to have crossed the line in his mind from being pantomime to being something more personal. Um, and I don't think he wanted that. And if you're put in an awkward position where you feel uncomfortable emotionally, that can reflect in your physical, your physical demeanor and the way you go about your work. Maybe he was thinking, Do you know what? I don't want to get involved in all this insulting crap. I don't want to be involved in in a in a game where we're constantly, you know, berating each other and um, you know, I just I just don't want that. I've had enough of that type of thing over the last couple of years, you know. Life is more serious than that. We should be supporting each other, not slagging each other off. Even though we're opponents, we should be able like gentlemen, maybe. You know, maybe I'm just trying to you know, play amateur psychologist, I suppose, and, and wonder what, what exactly has happened. It, these are all just theories, or maybe they're half-baked theories. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. But something went wrong with Chris Eubank Jr. that was, I think, as much emotional as and psychological as physical. Um, Although maybe he knew, maybe the physical side of things was getting to him. Maybe he sensed that it wasn't going to be his night uh, because of because maybe he, you know maybe just after all these years of of, of draining himself to one sixty, it suddenly occurred to him. He suddenly felt awful. He felt bad. <laughs> and when you're in a physically a physical bad place, it affects you mentally and emotionally. Vice versa, when you're in an emotional bad place, it can affect you physically. Um, and discipline comes through repetition, repetition, repetition. So he was going through the motions, yeah, in training, and he was getting himself down to a certain weight and so on and so forth. But there comes a time when you reach that sort of threshold and when, you know, all that line in the sand, which when you cross it, you suddenly realize things are not all they should be. Um, so yeah, it was such a shocking, uh, end result that I think, you know, the autopsy on that fight is, is a lot of people are going to say a lot of things. Um, and I'm not someone who thinks Chris Eubank Jr. is necessarily a bad fellow. I mean, the other thing is, there's one more thing that, that should be mentioned, and that is that, of course, he 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 is a multimillionaire's son. I mean, Eubank, Eubank Sr., I think, declared bankruptcy, but growing up, if, you, if you've ever seen the old reality TV show, um, at home with the Eubanks. This is when Chris was a teenager. Chris Jr. was a teenager. Then he had all his brothers and uh, his his sister, Emily. Was, I think she was just eight or nine or so, something like that. You know, there were the four kids. There was the mum and the dad. This is Eubanks' first wife, of course. Um, Karen, I think her name was. Um, 
you know, Chris Eubank Jr. They grew up in in an environment that, to most people, certainly to me with my background, would be considered luxurious. And yes, you can learn discipline, and you can learn, as I say, you can get into that repetitious, um, that repetition of you know the work ethic. You can you you can learn a work ethic. But when it comes to the crunch, when the chips are down, it does take a certain, put it this way, those who have been, who have had nothing, those who have been there and struggled and had to fight for everything, literally everything to build a life. Um, that can't be replicated, I don't think. You know. Um, and work ethic is a great thing, but if you've literally started with nothing and built something up, your mentality, your psychology will be different to somebody who did grow up in a, a good environment, has natural talent, uh, has a good work ethic. But when it comes to life and death, then, yeah, the, the thoughts can cross your mind, well... Is this really worth it? You know, do I really need this? Um, there's a soft core sometimes with people who, who were born into money. Um, they're good when the going's good, but when it gets really bad, they may even survive when it's bad, but when it gets really bad, when you've got to dig deep, when you've got to go back to that person who had nothing and fight it, that inherent, you know, you have that inherent desire and refusal to be beaten. That is something that only life experience can sometimes give you. You can't really learn it. And I just wonder if there was an element of that to Eubank Jr. I could be wrong. Again, these are all just theories. These are just theories. Um, but let me know your opinions, because I think this is an interesting subject. Or was it just a case that Liam Smith was too good for him? Because Smith is by far the better boxer. He's by far the better skilled fighter. He's a world-class operator. He does everything absolutely well. I mean, nothing spectacular, but everything well. There wasn't really a, a bad aspect to his game. You know, he can infight. He chooses punches well. He controls the range well. Good jab, good footwork, holds his shape well, all this stuff. And if you look at him against Canelo, he was fighting Canelo. He was trying to win. He was trying to beat Canelo. This is what I say about him and, and Callum Smith. Callum Smith against Canelo, he, he barely tried to win. He was trying to survive virtually from the early rounds. Liam Smith fought Canelo. He got knocked out with a body punch. Fair enough. Canelo's, you know, good fighter. But Liam, Liam has a fighter's mentality. And of all the four brothers, he has that, that innate, inherent spite. Um, and maybe he was just too good for Eubank. Maybe at 160, he's a, he should have been at 160 for years because he's in his 30s. Um, maybe he's just physically stronger. Maybe just better. You know, well, he was better. We saw that. But let me know what you think. Give me your opinions. And um, I'd like to read them. Uh, and I'll answer, of course, to any anyone who comments. Um, thank you for your time, as always. If you could subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. And, um, yeah, enjoy your Sunday anyway. We'll speak again soon. Bye for now.